Jeff Eagle is one of our MSF ambassadors. Jeff is a very good friend of the MS Foundation. When I first started uh, at the foundation, we have something called The Biggest Loser, where we were all being motivated to lose weight. And um, there was a sign on the stairs to check off when you walk up the stairs and down the stairs. We had a contest, and he was trying to get us all into shape. And now I'll read the official Jeff um, introduction. Jeff Siegel is a personal trainer in Boca Raton, Florida, and a national motivational speaker and presenter. He's a graduate of Florida State University and was diagnosed with MS in 1998. He is an MSF ambassador and works daily with people affected by MS. Jeff was awarded the 2007 Personal Trainer of the Year by the National Strength and Conditioning Association and the Fitness Institute International. Please help me in welcoming Jeff Siegel. Hello. All right, I'm going to put Casey to work because I'm, I'm going to try to stay behind here in one spot, but you know it's tough for me to stand in one spot. So, so I'm on, I'm on, I'm on my way to movement here. Okay. First, I want to tell you guys a little bit about myself, and this is I'm just going to keep this up here so you can continue to look at the programs and whatnot from the foundation, but. What got me here was basically the same thing that got you guys here. So I kind of have an understanding of where you guys are or where you've been and the mindset that is associated with having MS because none of us chose it, but here we are with it. And something that I've done with it is, you know, when you're first diagnosed, you don't know what you're going to do. You think your whole life is going to change. You don't know about what your dreams were or where you're going with them. And it was very difficult for me. I mean, I was an athlete. I was an all-state football player. I was twice the person I am now, literally. I was a, a big guy. And, and I was in college, and I was studying exercise science. And when I got out of college, I, I, I found out I had MS. And blah, 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 blah. But what ended up happening was I kind of took the torch and ran with it. And one, from one thing to another led me to research on MS and exercise and doing what I can for myself. And my clients as a personal trainer um, slowly but surely grew as most of them being M people with MS. So right now I'd say about 75 to 80 percent of the people who I work with do have MS. They kind of come to me, I go to them, I do talks like this all over the place. How many of you have heard me talk before? Okay, so if, if you hear something for the second time, uh, don't tell the person next to you what's going to happen, because it could be exciting. And if you forget, if you forgot, even better, because it'll be like hearing it the first time. Um, let's see. How many of you guys exercise in here? OK. I got something that I'd like to do, and it's uh, just some participation. And well, first off, always consult a medical, uh, qualified medical professional before beginning an exercise program. Can you guys hear me OK? All right. And what I'm, you can, you can take a look at this, but you guys have heard from doctors um, all over the place, I'm sure. You've gone to programs. You guys are very proactive. You know, you're on a cruise for people with MS. I mean, how much better can this get? You know, usually, usually I got a bunch of people in the room that uh, are barely made it to the room, weren't sure if they were going to come. Weren't, you guys are participants. And as I go with the program, you're going to see life is about participating. It's not as much about spectating. You can be a spectator, but to be a participant, you're living your dreams. You know, they may not be the way you wrote them when, when things started out, but dreams don't have to change. Goals don't have to change. If, you, if you've got barriers in front of your goals, it doesn't mean to change your goals. It just means to change your direction a little bit. And then you find where you're going. So as far as this goes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you guys to participate if you want. You don't have to. Something simple. But the only rule I have is you got to give 100%. Fair? OK. I want everybody to raise their hand as high as you can possibly raise it. Okay. Raise it this much higher. OK, put your hands down. Wow, this is the first time everybody's put their hands up. And everybody raise it this much higher. This is much more than 100%? Because I asked you to give 100% in the first 
you know, the first thing was just give 100%. And if you gave a little bit more than that, then that might define what's ahead of you in life. Because you can always do a little bit more. You know, if you think you're giving 100% and you do more, obviously you weren't giving 100%. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Now, we all have incentives also. We live on incentives. What do we work for? Exactly, money. The most of the incentives that we are living for are monetary, but it doesn't mean it has to be. For me, my incentive is to have fun. There's nothing better than having fun and enjoying life and then sharing it. So if I, had, if I were to tell you I had $10,000 in my pocket right now for someone who, the first person who can get their hand up two feet higher than that, what would happen? <laughs> yeah, you'd get like 600% effort, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. But there's always a little bit more you can do. You just got to find a way. If, you, if you're always thinking along those lines of finding a way, you're not going to be looking for excuses to not do something. You just, you know, have fun with life. Physical fitness is commonly defined as the capacity to carry out everyday activities, both work and play, without excessive fatigue or injury, and to conduct these activities with enough energy reserve to meet emergency situations. Plain and simple, okay? It doesn't matter the level that you're at or what you're able to do or what you're not able to do. You just, you, you live to that level. And, you know, with that, a little bit left in the reserve tank so that you don't, you know, exhaust yourself completely, and if there is an emergency, you can handle it. But that's basically what exercise comes down to. And as children, what do we do? What do all children do? Play, play right? You don't wake up one day and say, oh, I'm too old to have fun. It doesn't work. That, that's not the way it goes. You, you lose track of things. You do other stuff. You find yourself going to work. And then you come home from work. And it becomes this strenuous routine and stressful. And you know that's not how it has to be. Find time in your plans for fun, which, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. We're on a cruise. <laughs> okay, this is what exercise boils down to. This is uh, an acronym, SED, that I've always learned about in school and, you know, that I've read about, and, and, I, and I preach it. Specific adaptations to impose demands. That means if you can do something and you continually do it and you do it harder and better, then your body's going to adapt and you're going to become more efficient. That's how exercise works. There's three things that I like to talk about, what you should do, what you're able to do, but those are meaningless if you're not willing to do it. Okay? You know, you hear the doctors tell you what you should do and you know what you're able to do, but it's not things that you should be sitting down in a chair or laying in bed thinking about what if. You know, it's let's do it now. From here forward, you do it. And if I asked everybody who, why you do not exercise, some of you would probably tell me the same thing that I hear at every program, every talk I do, whether it's people with MS or people without MS. And that's, well, I used to be able to dot, 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 you know, run a marathon. I used to be able to, uh, you know, triathlon. I used to do this. I used to do that. Great. I used to be this tall. Okay. <laughs> and I grew. So what happens is you take the experiences that have been you know, part of your past, and you allow them to lead to your future, and it's the hard work that you did that got you to that point. But if I told you to say whatever it was, you know, if you said that it was, uh, you know, you ran a marathon, you're comparing yourself today to the very best and the hardest you ever worked in your whole life at whatever given point, which means you know how to do it. You know how to work hard, but your mind's tricking you saying, well, I used to be able to do this, but now I can't do that, so I'm going to sit here and dwell on it. No, don't dwell on it. Live Live your life in a forward direction. Now, why? Um, the only thing wrong with doing nothing is that you never know what you're gonna, uh, never know when you're gonna be finished. Okay. <laughs> I, I like these little quotes because they're funny, and you'll see that everything has a little bit of humor in it. But it's true. Now, the benefits of exercise: improve fitness. Improved ability to, to perform activities of daily living. Reduced depression and anxiety. None of us need that, right? No. <laughs> Is that, if anybody has no depression, no anxiety, never gets angry or worried about anything, come talk to me afterwards. I, I need some advice. <laughs> uh, reduced fatigue. Anybody in here ever have fatigue? I'm going to uh, little, go a little bit further into fatigue. But some of the fatigue may not be MS fatigue. Some may, but it's important to figure out what is and what isn't. Uh, 
reduces comorbidities. You know what that is? That means you have MS, you also have diabetes, you also have thyroid. I'm not saying you, you definitely do, but those are the comorbidities. Just because you have MS doesn't mean you can't have anything else and everything across the board can be helped with exercise. It's, it's the way we're built. We're built to move, we're built to do stuff, we're built to live. Increases strength, balance, and your motor function. Better sense of well-being and accomplishment. This, I think, may be the best thing you can get out of exercise. And I'm not downplaying the other stuff, but if you feel better about yourself and when you see yourself in the mirror, you see a happy person, life is a lot easier and more fun to live. Okay? What I do every morning, every morning I wake up, what's the first thing you guys do in the morning? What? Huh? You guys are so full of it. I go to the bathroom. <laughs> I go to the bathroom, but on my way to the bathroom, and on my way to almost every bathroom that I've been to in my life, there's a mirror. And if you stop and you look in the mirror and you smile, that means at the end of the day when you're going to sleep, you can't look back and say, today I had no fun and didn't smile once. So you get that one smile out, and you know what it looks like when I do it? It's pretty ugly. It's like this. <laughs> and then I usually do this because I'm laughing at myself. And then I go about my day. I go to the bathroom, I go, I eat, I, and, and on with the day. Um, it may help bladder. It may help your bladder control. Now, one thing about exercise is it's, if you're having bladder problems, it's a major barrier. It's, it's something, it's, it's embarrassing, it's difficult, it's uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean to get dehydrated so you don't have a problem. It means you find out how to fix the problem. You got your physicians, you got a team of people that are working with you, and you, you work to make it better. And it, it may help your bladder. Uh, may improve recovery time across the board. I mean, that just that's conditioning. You know, your recovery time also from injury. If, now, something that I always talk about when I'm not speaking to people with MS is I'm a fortune teller. And if I were to tell you that in the future, Three months down the road, you're going to be in a major accident, but if you exercise and get yourself in good shape, in the best shape that you can possibly get yourself into right now, in three months, you may not only live, but you may recover well. How many people would say, no, I'm not, that's, I'm not interested? Well, if you have relapsing or remitting MS or any kind of MS that has flare-ups, that accident has no warning, just like a car accident. So you want to be prepared. Preparation, prepared, being prepared is so much, it's it, it just, if you're not prepared, you're out of luck, right? So everything that I'm saying means, all right, and then when he is done speaking, I'm going to think about how I can exercise, and hopefully you'll know a little bit more about it. And also tomorrow when I speak, I'm going to be planting some seeds today because I want it to be a little bit more interactive, and I want to know what kind of questions or what kind of problems or or concerns you have about exercise that I can help you with and we're gonna we're gonna go through everything all right so it's gonna tomorrow's gonna be a lot of fun a lot of movement a lot of watching a lot of playing all that kind of stuff may help reduce or limit spasticity I sh this should be like a big ad right all these things this it may help this it may help that better participation in social activities that's the, the second uh, the second biggest thing to me is you want to be a participant you know, I'm going to keep telling you that you want to be a participant. Life is about participating. And the more you're able to participate, the happier you'll be. And that smile might not be this. Bone strength. Um, plus, your heart gets stronger. And it can re reduce falls. Okay. There's two proteins that may be impro have improvements or better uh, protective effects for the neurons with MS and the repair, which is the... Uh, the BDNF, which is the brain-derived neurotropic factor, and the nerve growth factor. And these things may increase with exercise. May or may not, it's, it's still out there. But hey, it, they're not going to go away because you're exercising. Don't let yesterday take up too much of today. I'm sure nobody in this room does that, right? <laughs> okay, where can you exercise? When you're exercising indoors, these numbers may sound a little cool. Boy, you guys are from up north, a lot of you. You guys are, these temperatures, that's hot, 66 to 70 degrees. 
But 66 to 70 degrees is the temperature for exercise for people with MS, according to the American College of Sports Medicine. For the general pop, it's 66 to 74 degrees. So if you're going to join a gym or if you're going somewhere to exercise, that's the numbers where it should be. And if it feels like it's cold, it means you should work a little bit harder. Because if you, anybody in here knows what it's like when you're exercising, your body heats up, your core temperature rises a little bit, you need to be in a cool environment, you need to be able to sweat, it needs to work, all your systems work better in this, in this uh, temperature. Also in aquatic exercise, it's 80 to 84 degrees. And if anybody has any questions along the way, feel free, because I, I got a slide program here. It's easy for me to uh, not worry about forgetting things. Yeah, because I have a problem with my short-term memory, too, and I have a problem with my short-term memory. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nobody who ever gave their best effort regretted it. You ever given your best and said, uh, I wish I didn't give my best? I wish I would have done a little worse? No. Okay, exercise locations, places that you can exercise in your home, in your gym, pool, t temperature, I already told you about that. Um, the park, friend's house, at home in front of the TV. Anybody exercise in front of the television? It's a great thing to do. I have a, this little bike that you can move around. It's handheld. You can put it up on a table. It's like a little ergometer. You can plug it in if you're not, if it's not, a, if you're not able to continue going. You just plug it into it. But if you're sitting watching a television show, half an hour goes by like that, right? So if you're just moving your legs for a half an hour, hey, you're in. It's great. And, and if, you don't, if it's something that you don't feel comfortable with doing, find something else. But the th important thing is to find something that works for you. Uh, friend's house, AC, fan, hospital, wellness center. There's so many places that you can exercise. I mean, everywhere you are, there's something that you can do. And for some, exercise could be something just as easy as lifting your shoulders and dropping them. You know, elevation, depression, elevation, depression. Something like that, something simple. Now this one I, found, I thought was hysterical, especially here, because here we can make it across the sea just by staring at the water. You know, I've been watching the water. I have, no, I have nothing to do with the ship getting where we're going. Okay, how? I'm often asked how and what the best type of exercise is for MS. What it boils down to is the best exercise for people with MS is what you're willing to do, what you enjoy doing. You can build a program around that. Anybody in here have something that they like to do? I got I got cruises. cruises. There you go. <laughs> and you got to do a lot of moving to get around the cruise. Oh, yeah. You know, up and down, in and out, wherever you're going. Uh, anybody else have anything you guys like to do? See, this is where I should have uh, some props because I'd like to throw something out there just to get you guys. Actually, I do have one thing. Pick a color. Orange, purple. Orange, purple. Pick one. Red. Okay. Out of all those colors, I only have the red, so. <laughs> Who said red? I did. All right, you win, the red balloon. You win the red balloon. <laughs> you know, I was given a talk recently where I was telling everybody about, oh, yeah, use a balloon. Nothing can break with a balloon. You can just hit it around, it's fun, it's enjoyable. What's the worst thing that could happen? And within a second, someone knocked their glass over and shattered on the table. And, and I said, well, that's what I wanted to find out. <laughs> so no tables, no glass, right? Just making sure it's not. OK, I'm just going to hit. This is a weak balloon. Get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That'll just stay there. What's that? May I add a couple exercises? You may. Um, I really like, um, I take um, aqua aerobics and aqua zumba. I love being in the water. Like, if I could be the girl in the bubble, like 24-7, I <laughs> would love it. That's I great. I mean, that. aquatic exercise is great because you don't, it doesn't feel as hot. Uh, the only thing that you have to be a little bit careful about with aquatic exercise is not doing too much. Yeah, you can you can overdo it, and you and the problem is getting out of the pool, yeah. and then you realize, oh my God, gravity! <laughs> you know, gravity is tough when you get out of the pool. Uh, may I add one too, Jeff? Of course.
Don't plantar flex, or you'll get caught, or you'll get caught for speeding. <laughs> okay, things to consider when you're exercising as far as safety goes. Temperature, stay cool. Lermit sign, anybody know what that is? Touch your chin. Yeah. Right. So when you're at, when you're at a gym, well, first off, when you're at a doctor's office, the doctor says, "Okay, put your chin to your chest." Sound familiar? Yeah. All right. And if it doesn't, cognition problems. We all have them. <laughs> you know, it's okay to have cognitive problems. It is because that way, if you're home relaxing, you can watch Law and Order all the time, and you'll always catch a new episode. Right? <laughs> you can catch the same episode six times in a row, and it's new. Um, so what happens with Lermit's sign is, you, can you guys hear me okay without the mic, or would you rather me do it with the mic? All right, tell me if this is any better. <laughs> okay. Lermit's sign is when you put your chin to your chest, and you get that electrical shocking feeling down your limbs, or a single limb, or all of them. But when you're exercising, you really got to make sure that you're lined up correctly. There's no exercise in the stuff that I do. Sometimes in yoga there is where you have to tuck your chin a little bit, but just be careful. Um, when you tuck your chin down, like if you're doing a lat pull down, for instance, do you guys know what that is? A lat pull down, if you put your head down, it really puts a lot of pressure on your chin. It's something that you shouldn't do whether you have MS or not, but if you have MS, you can drop the weights, you know, you can really injure yourself. Especially if you're using something like a dumbbells or, or barbells, uh, speaking of which, dumbbells. Anyone in here ever use dumbbells? Do you know where they get the name dumbbell from? Me. <laughs> there. He, I'm so happy he finally came. <laughs> no, dumbbells. Anybody know what a dumbbell, how they came up with the word? It's a dumb bell. It, hundreds of years, a couple hundred years ago when dumbbells were first started to be uh, beginning use, a bell has the, the thing that hits it, right? Well, when that's not in it anymore, it's a dumbbell. It's no sound. And that's where they came up with the word dumbbell from. It's not just a word that came about and oh, it's a dumbbell. It's not actually dumb. Here. There you go. See, look at you guys exercising, not even realizing it. OK, the time cognition plays a big part. Time, the time of the day. The time of the day plays a big part with cognition because People get tired at specific times when you have MS, at least I do, and the people who I've worked with usually have a specific time of the day that they're least energized. Do you guys, can you guys relate to that? Well, so the, the, the solution is don't exercise during that time. <laughs> you know, if you're tired at noon, do not schedule your exercise time for noon. Schedule it when you have the most energy, and if you're working, then that time can be um, you know, before work, after work, lunch break, uh, coffee break, just sneaking out, not telling the boss. Uh, bowel bladder issues, stay hydrated. Uh, yeah, I know, that was a, I, I get that every time and I forget to change it every time I show this slide. But bowl and bladder, you know, they kind of go hand in hand, right? <laughs> or, or not. Uh, and beyond MS, I talked about comorbidities, spasticity. Um, so here's one for you guys. It works for me, you know. Th this kind of sums it up sometimes. You think about it is, we have MS, all right? We got to deal with it because there's no alternative. So let's just make the best of it, right? You guys are on a cruise. I'm going to keep going back to that. Anytime something gets on like, uh, well, we're on a cruise. Fatigue. This is something that I ask all my clients when I'm working with them, especially uh, when they're experiencing fatigue or say that they have fatigue. But right off the bat, how did you feel yesterday? So you want to make a comparison to how yesterday was versus today. What happened between the time you had all this energy and the time you don't have all this energy? How did you sleep last night? These are very basic things. What did, what did you eat? Because what you eat is what you're going to use for your energy. So if you have not eaten, you will likely not have energy. Um, what meds are you taking? You know, do the meds have uh, consequences of, uh, you know, loss of energy? How am I handling the stress in my life? Probably the number one reason that I've seen people have fatigue 
is issues in their life, problems, uh, relationship problems, stress, all these different things add up. He's still our captain. Okay, hot or cold temperatures. Um, that can cause fatigue. Uh, did you overdo it? Did you do something else? And when everything else is wiped out, hey, you're left with MS. So then you deal with that. And that's why you have your physicians and your healthcare team. Now, this is something that um, he, he was from my alma mater. I'm a Seminole. We're national champions. It's great. You know, it's, it's good to say that we haven't been since I was there. And, and uh, I had no, I didn't help him out with that, but I could have. Okay, here are the types of exercise. There's aerobic exercise, and these, uh, there's walking, jogging, bike, swim, elliptical, rowing, moving rhythmically. Those can be aerobic. Now, the difference between aerobic and cardiovascular, do you guys know what that is? Most people think, oh, I'm going to do cardio, I'm going to do aerobic. Uh, it's difficult to sustain uh, cardiovascular exercise with MS sometimes because your nerves may not get the message all the way down and they fatigue your, uh, you get local fatigue. You ever see if you're doing something like this, if you're able to stand and, and, and march? This is what happens when nerve conduction slows down. And then eventually it's that, and then it's just that. So there's a way to, to work around that a little bit. If you can do lower body and upper body and lower body and upper body, you can still get a cardiovascular effect, which is sustaining large muscle groups in a rhythmic movement pattern for at least 20 minutes. Uh, I like doing circuit training. Any guys, anyone in here ever done circuits? If you do circuits, upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, it's shunting your blood and you're getting that cardiovascular effect. Maybe not as much as sustained, but maybe as much, maybe more, depending on the intensity. Um, flexibility, range of motion, uh, that's basically, I, I like to consider that part of every workout, flexibility and range of motion, because your full functional range of motion, if you're going through that, you're also getting flexibility, and you're maintaining your joints range of motion. Like, if I had no weight in my hand and I just did this all the time, I'm not, I'm not going to lose this movement. I may not get stronger in it, but I'm not going to lose the movement. Uh, this is getting uh, intense out here. <laughs> you guys want to do something more than break a glass, don't you? <laughs> uh, there's, there's many types of flexibility training and, and stretching. Uh, there's isometric. There's active, passive, dynamic, static, ballistic, and assisted, and, and PNF. All right. Yes. Therapeutic horseback riding is great because it does help with a lot of different postural and uh, balance and proprioception. Do you guys know what proprioception is? Proprioception is your body's ability to know where you are in space. So you've got proprioceptors throughout your body. So that way, if I were to step here and I stepped on a pebble or something, it's going to signal from spot to spot to spot to make sure that I don't turn my ankle. So if you ever were to watch somebody, and, if, and when you can have proprioception if you're not standing too because it's a signal coming back and forth. If I were to stand on one leg here, if you see my ankle moving back and forth, that's my body's, you know, just, I'm not telling it to do that. You know, if I start to sway, I'm not thinking, okay, I'm going to turn my hip over here, and I'm going to put my, my leg over here, and this is going to go back and forth. It's a reaction. It's just the way your body works. Uh, well, that, that's, where, um, that's where that comes into play a lot, which he was saying, horseback riding. And it's fun. I'm not quite sure about the horse, but no, I'm sure the horse likes it. They like it. They get petted. They get fed. They everything. Uh, and, and a lot of people who I work with use... Uh, use hippotherapy and have tremendous success. Can I point out that scooters are horses too? If you just sit there passively slumped in it and you're not reacting as it's moving over terrain, you're not taking advantage of your scooter. Put your spine up in alignment and actively resist the scooter's movement on the ship. You're working your core the whole time. Yep. And
And you know what? Uh, catching the balloon is similar to what you were saying. Yeah. Because you see everybody, even if you slap the balloon, you're moving your body. And you have to s prevent your body. You have core muscles. And without core muscles, this is what happens if you go to slap a balloon from a chair and have no core muscles. Come on, balloon. Where's the balloons? They were popping everywhere just now. Not popping, but... No. <laughs> if this balloon was coming to me and I had no core muscles and I went like this, I'd keep going and fall out of the chair. So to maintain my posture, recovery is coming back to a midline. Here, here, there. And that takes a lot of core muscles. If you don't have strong core muscles, the best thing is to get strong core muscles. <laughs> I'm giving you guys the balloon back. Where do you buy them? What, balloons? <laughs> no. Core muscles? <laughs> I know a guy, I saw a guy selling them in Puerto Rico. <laughs> but they weren't real, they were, they were fakes. There was a nurse at my, um, I go to USC, and um, there was a nurse in there that was called Giddy Up. It's a mechanical bull, isn't it? It's a mechanical bull, but it's great for your core muscles. And that's what I'm going to pay for. I'm not trying Now, balance is something else. Well, first, I'm going to go into PNF. PNF is, is a type of stretch where if you push, it's not something that you should do on your own. But if you find someone that does know how to do it, it can help you feel a little bit better. It's not going to make your muscles looser when you're not doing that type of stretch from what research says. But it's when you're holding a stretch for about seven seconds, someone's pushing you, you're pushing against it, and then they relax, and then they go back further. I don't know if you've ever had a therapist do that with you before. But that's just, uh, it helps your range of motion. It's, it's going to help free a joint. And... I like to use it, and most people don't know about it, but PNF as a form of movement is in movement, there's something called an amortization period. All right, now everybody, whoever was falling asleep during my talk just woke up. You think I don't plan that with the balloons? Because eventually they're going to pop and everyone's going to be awake for a moment. Um, but P a PNF movement would be just to, uh, it's to take advantage of that amortization time in the in between concentric and eccentric movement. So if I were to hold something like, and I'm going to try not to do too much of this today because I want to really get some more stuff for tomorrow. Doing a movement like this, when I'm here for that split second, my muscles in between concentric and eccentric. So it's I'm stopping myself and I'm coming back down. That's using PNF as a movement, or here and here, or doing something like that. Plyometrics is the same thing. When you're doing a plyometric jump, or uh, something with your upper body, whether it be a push. Anybody in here not able to do a squat or a push up? If you can't stand up whatsoever, then you can't do a squat. But if you can just get up out of a chair, that's a squat. And if you're using your arms, it's a modified squat. And if you do it twice, you did two squats. And if you can push something away from your body, you can do a push-up. It's just a modified push-up. That, that's the only difference. Balance is, wait, let me see something, because I'm checking something for tomorrow. Ooh, they're going to love us tomorrow. <laughs> I got all kinds of fun stuff in here, because tomorrow I'm going to show you how to do things if you think you don't have the right equipment or or it's too expensive, I'm going to show you some inexpensive ways to be able to exercise at home, and they're, they're a lot of fun. Timing. Now, when you're taking disease-modifying treatments, uh, you're taking them so you're doing better, so you'll do better. Is that correct? So don't take them and say, I can't exercise because I take them. Because that's, that's, you know, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> If you're taking something that's causing you problems for a long enough time to not be able to exercise or not be able to find the time to exercise, talk to your doctor about it. 
because that is one of the reasons why you would change medicines is if it's, if it's hurting your, your daily life and daily activities rather than helping them. Um, and you talk, that, that's part of, uh, that's why people don't take meds is because you have problems with them. So you find a medicine that's right for you, you stay with it. That's so important. If the doctors have something that, you sh that fe they feel you should take and you're taking it and it's helping, stick with it as long as you possibly can. Um, now, as far as your daily exercise goes, uh, how long, is it, how long has it been since you took your medicine? If you're taking a medicine that causes fatigue or flu-like symptoms or something like that, it's still helpful for you. But it's not helpful for you to exercise just after you took something that raised your core temperature. So you take it at a different time. You don't eliminate exercise. Please, don't. Um, and support. All the medicine companies have great support systems, support uh, you know, there's Active Source, there's Shared Solutions, there's, you name them, they got them. If they don't have them, call Natalie. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't have to call her, but she'd be happy to help you, right? Yeah. Anytime, uh, before midnight. <laughs> no, Even after, midnight. after midnight. Okay, cardiovascular training, I promise it says that. <laughs> See, they're doing cardiovascular exercise. It may be difficult without monitoring your core temperature. Make sure you take advantage of things like the cooling program, right? We got a great cooling program with the foundation. If you don't take advantage of it, you will not get help by it. Help by it. <laughs> You've got to do it. It's support. So like I was saying when we were talking amongst the, uh, each other the other day in the little group, if you go to a shoe store and you hear the guys trying to sell you on the most comfortable, best supportive shoes, it doesn't matter how comfortable and how much support they have if you don't wear them, right? You gotta wear your support like you would a shoe. So if you're not asking for help and you're not going out and reaching for it, it may not come climbing over to you. You know, nobody knows what you're thinking, except for me. Um, no, I really don't know what you're thinking. Well, I'll tell you who might. Actually, I'm gonna tell you a quote from the 20th century philosopher. You may know this, but see who knows this. Do or do not, do or not do, there's no try. Yoda, there you go. Yoda. I like to say, I like to mix Yoda and Nike in the same sentence because just do it. You know, just do it. Don't just say you're going to try. Because at the end of the day, if you say you're going to try, that was good enough for you. You know, trying has to be active. You, I got to actively do something to get something accomplished. Circuit training might be most beneficial because if your upper body has localized fatigue or nerve conduction failure, like I was showing you with the steps, or if, uh, or if you're doing uh, alternating presses and it eventually looks like this, and then this arm here is just kind of hanging there and this one's going, there's two things that you can do. Work the hell out of this arm here because it's, it's your bread and butter, or switch to lower body, let your upper body rest, and then you'll get a little bit more out of the exercise. Um, but you know what? I was talking a, a couple months ago, and somebody walked up to me. Actually, it was more than a couple months ago. And they walked up, barely made it up to the front. I don't know why they did this. It was in the middle of a talk, and they were really angry. And they're angry about their bad leg. And they walked up like this, and they're literally dragging their leg. They made it all the way up to the front with a cane and everything. And Interrupted my program, really got me mad. <laughs> no, it didn't get me mad, but it said, I, what am I to do about this leg? I said, this leg here, it, been, it, it doesn't do anything anymore. I can't do anything because of this leg. And I said, well, you got up to the front of the room. Not with that leg, maybe, but with the other leg. So put some time and thought into the good leg, the good things that work. The bad leg is bad, okay? You can get some help with that, but if you don't continue getting stronger with the good leg, that good leg may be the bad leg. So if you'd start right now, five years from now, you're not going to say, you know what? For the past five years, I haven't done anything, and now I can't do anything. Because that goes back to the very first slide I showed you, specific adaptations to impose demands. If you don't impose a demand on your body, it's not going to get a result. So use what you got. Use it, use it, use it, use it, use it, use it, use it. And it's going to get stronger and better, and it's going to keep going. And that's what you want to do is keep going. That's what it's all about. You know, the, the medicines that we were talking, what I was talking about, the disease-modifying medicines, they're not going to do you any good if you don't take care of yourself. 
You got to do the things for that to work best. And, and they go hand in hand. So MS to me is an excuse to do more. You know, it's not an excuse to sit back and say, I can't, 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 because at the end of the day, you spend more time saying you can't and dwelling on the things that you can't do, when, such as exercise. I've asked people, well, did you exercise yesterday? And they said, you know what, believe it or not, I got up at around 11 o'clock. I'd love to do that. <laughs> I got up at 11 o'clock, and between 11 and 3, I wanted to exercise. And for every second for those four hours, I thought about it. I wanted to do 30 minutes of exercise. And by the time 3 o'clock came around, you know, Jeff, 3 o'clock's the time when I'm tired. It really, so, I'm, so I tried to do it again another day. Now, are you kidding me? You know how much energy it takes to sit and be upset about something you can't do? You will waste so much energy, mental energy. It'll, it'll beat you up. But if you just do that 30 minutes, you know, you will not be wasting that energy. 30 minutes versus the three and a half hours that you waste, it, it's worth it, you know? It's not, it's not as difficult. I, I want to ask a question. Um, stamina. Um, I, I do physical therapy and I do about an hour and a half workout. I do it slowly and I love it. It's what's getting me walking some. But the fallout is I come home and I have to sleep for about five hours. I cannot stay awake when I get home. I'm good. You gotta find you gotta find the best amount, the the amount of time putting into it, and talk to the therapist. Because as much as physical therapy is helpful, as much as training is helpful, as much as exercise is helpful, it doesn't replace life. You know, no. so you want to work your way up to it. And if, if an hour and a half is, is doing that to you, then you may want to talk to him about decreasing the time or putting more time into stretching and stuff like that while doing stuff in between. Is that not, does that make sense? It does, at the same time, um, I don't know, I don't fall as much because of doing it. So to me, maybe my thinking, and maybe I'm wrong, is that why I can do it, I need to do more because when there's an exacerbation, I backslide so much, I want to have extra to go back to. But you want, you don't want more to make less, mm -hmm. okay. you know? You, you want to do, you want to find the amount of time if, it's, I've got some people that can only do stuff for five to ten minutes. At a time, that's what we do. We yeah. Okay, so may, maybe maybe an hour, maybe half an hour. I don't know where you're doing it or the people that you're doing it with or how well they know about MS or how well you're telling them about what's going on with you because they can't read your mind. No, no, no. He knows a lot. It's just, I'm pushing. You are? Well, oh, yeah. you know, the one thing about MS is... When you don't have MS, the goal of exercise is pick a rep range that you're going to do something, and you do it until the last the last rep is to failure. MS, you don't want to go to exhaustion. You want to have that one left in the tank. So, yeah, so that it's important to find what it is. And for me, I've done that. I mean, I've gone over the line. I, I, I like to live close to the edge and try to skate as close to the edge as I can and not fall off. I've fallen off a couple times. <laughs> But if you know where the edge is, just get close to it. No, don't go past it. You know, it, it's just like looking over a cliff, which we had some in some of these islands. I walked right up to the cliff where the end, it was about here, and I walked up to about here. And I was doing that. You know, and I, the, the devil over here was saying, come on, you can go to the edge and look down. But I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't not this time. Circuit training might be beneficial because circuits are upper body and lower body. Uh, the rate of perceived exertion, that's just what the level is as far as uh, it, the Borg scale is 6 to 20. And you want to be somewhere between 12 and 14. That's, that's where you don't want to cross. When, you, when you're with a therapist, do they ever show you those pages where it says 1 to 10 or 6? I don't, I don't know why they did 6 to 20. It's been used so much. I think 1 to 10 is a, mu is a much better number three to four is about where you'd be. Uh, but that's where you want to find your comfort zone in. Three to four times a week is recommended for cardiovascular training if you can do it. If you can't do it, you do it a little bit lighter. You call it aerobic training and you know, you're, it's a win-win situation. Uh, vary, uh, vary the machines and modalities for the muscles to stay balanced. You know, so you don't want to just pick one modality and just stick to it, unless you really like that, because you, you can still benefit, but you still have to make the progressions necessary. 
Recommended aerobic intensity is 40 to 70% of VO2 max or heart rate reserve. Uh, you guys, that doesn't mean anything to you. Just stay between 40 and 70%. Um, if you have a trainer, a therapist that's working with you, uh, they will keep you within that level. But what the VO2 max is, is your oxygen consumption, your vital capacity, basically how much uh, oxygen you're able to use while exercising without it uh, not being beneficial. Um, and start with 40 to 50% with, with a progressive increase to 50 to 70% over about a period of six months. You know, as you get stronger, the resistance becomes higher. That's the way you will want to make it. So if you're exercising properly and you look at a, at a time frame of um, six months ago, a year ago, what felt difficult to you might seem very easy today. But if you increase it, that's how you get stronger and more stamina and the ability to do more. Because remember, the more you do, the more you can do. And there you go. Don't let what, uh, what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Resistance training, or just training. Two to three times a week, never do the same muscle group two days in a row unless it's in a very low rhythmic uh, manner. Um, I do that with some people. Most people who don't have MS, I can do like a, a leg day and the next day I'd unload the legs. Like I may do a heavy set of squats and lunges and stuff with someone and the next day go to a single legged squat uh, just to get that soreness or achiness out a little bit and it, and it may increase the uh, recovery. But I don't, I don't do the same muscle group two days in a row with people. I usually don't work two days in a row with people with MS. Uh, it's ideal to keep your, um, your max at 70% of your max or less when you're working out with MS. Um, that's, this stuff is kind of technical for you, but just remember, don't go to failure. And if you do go to just about failure and you keep one left in the tank, you're still going to get the benefits of exercise. So we'll still get muscle growth. You guys are all awake again. I love it. <laughs> muscle growth is still there. Uh, Increase in stamina is still there. Uh, use exercise that mimic those of daily life or functional. Ever, any, any of you guys hear of functional fitness? It's like this craze. It's, just, it's, it's nothing new. It's basically doing stuff that mimics what your daily activities are or something that you want to do better. If you're a runner, then running would help being a runner. It mean, doesn't mean that you don't do other things as well, some weight training and some other stuff. Uh, but something that I've had people, I, I've had people sweep when I'm training them. I wish I could bring them to my house to do it. <laughs> um, but what I have them do is, is, is sweep because I want to see the motion that they're doing. And I want to see what, I can, what exercises I can prescribe to them that are going to help them in that motion. Or I, have some, I had a 72-year-old woman with MS that I'd take her out after she was warmed up and do stuff into the, in the front of her house, and she'd push my car around the block. It was great, especially with the gas prices. <laughs> But it was great because she loved it. You know, she started out by doing it like I, I, I was joking around with her, and I was working with someone that didn't have MS, a, a student, an athlete, and I had them pushing the car and then taking a break and pushing the car. And, I, and I'd talk to her about it, and she'd say, I want to give it a shot. So I helped her out, and I gave it a little push, and we went about three houses down. And it's the same thing I get from anybody. When you really like doing something, I always hear, OK, can we do more? <laughs> How about a little bit more, you know? And you gotta, I gotta make sure that they're not overdoing it because they're excited. But pushing a car is fun. It doesn't seem fun, but when you see how far you can get with it, it's, it's, it's fun. So if you guys wanna push my car ever. What kind of car is it? I got a Pacifica Chrysler with a lot of weights in the trunk in case someone's pushing the car. <laughs> Uh, no one RM testing for people with MS. I don't do that. That means how much, you know, you ever hear someone say, how much can you bench? <laughs> how much can you squat? That means how much you can do one time. We don't do that unless we're like really got something stuck on our chest. You know, if, if, if a bunch of weight was stuck on your chest, you'd know how much you can push or how much you couldn't. But that's not important. Single versus multi-joint movements. Uh, some people cannot do multi-joint movements because they've lost coordination or it becomes unsafe. Then you do single joints, and you can work single joints at a time. This is a single joint exercise, which is a bicep curl, versus a row, 
which is still working your biceps and the muscles that you did in the single joint exercise, but a row is a multi-joint exercise because you're working at the elbow joint and the shoulder joint and the shoulder girdle. So that's really using three joints. So you get more bang for the buck doing a multi-joint exercise. And the prime mover is the back muscles and the, and the helper, little helper muscles, the biceps. But uh, what, what I was always taught when I played football was the coach would say, no curls in the gym. Curls are for the girls. <laughs> Bring the curls to the beach. You know, so uh, because the curls are just going to build muscle size, but they're not going to really help with the actual, um, the actual activity, whether it be football or whatever else. Dis discontinue if fatigue becomes a factor. That's important. Um, you don't want to overdo it in the gym, or else you won't be able to do something the rest of the day or the next day, right? It happens. And relax. You guys ever wonder? You guys ever get so stressed out and you're frustrated and you gotta? You, I'll tell you the the best tip that I got for relaxing. I forgot it. No, I'm just kidding. I I should use it more. There, when I was at a, a a seminar in Las Vegas with the National Strength and Conditioning Association, we had we had a speaker who was an Olympian. He he was a bob, on the bobsled team. It's kind of funny, bobsled team. He he was he went to University of Florida. And that's even funnier. <laughs> no, but he said that when it got time to get up to that line to start, he was so razzled all the time, he had to find a way to, to relax. His way was, and you guys can all relate to this, you ever driving in the car and favorite song comes on and you're singing, da 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 whatever the song is, and while you're singing that song, and the person in the car next to you is laughing at you, and they're laughing at you, but you're in this other world singing the song, you do not have a single thought in your mind. So if you can find a song or something that you can put on that's going to help you with that, you put that song on, and you, you play it, and you sing it, and you may want to do it alone, but <laughs> in the shower where no one can hear you, I'm the best sing singer in the shower. I promise. But you'll never know, though. <laughs> uh, but that's something that you can do to relax and clear your mind because sometimes when your mind's not clear and, and you're getting razzled about everything, you're going to explode. You feel like you're going to explode. You're going to be tired. You're going to be aggravated. Everything's going to seem so bad. If you can just clear your mind, this might do it. No drugs involved. Flexibility training, spasticity it may help, co-contractions it may reduce. So all these things may reduce co-contractions. Co-contractions would be a neural effective exercise. Uh, co-contraction is when you're trying to do this and your triceps trying to do that and you end up like this. And that's spasticity and, that, and that's very painful and it's difficult. But if you can uh, massage, helps that, doing some flexibility work, stretching. Uh, I think that every exercise that I do is in full range of motion and I'm getting uh, benefits from it. If I'm doing a push-up and I'm coming down, let me push this over, and I'm coming down I'm stretching my chest. If I'm doing a row and I'm out here, I'm stretching my back. If you're going full range of motion, uh, you're getting stretching and, and uh, more flexibility work in. I like to follow exercise with static stretches for some. Some people don't like it, some people don't want it, but after doing a lot of resistance exercises, uh, yoga, tai chi, these are great things. These are things that combine many different aspects of exercise and help, will help you. And I'll tell you one other thing is, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You know, think about that. Because if you think you can't do something, you'll talk yourself out of it, you won't be able to do it as well, but if you go in thinking positive, thinking yes I can, yes I can, I'm going to, here's the way it's gonna be, you're going to come out with a better result. At least you're going to come out thinking, oh, well, I did it a little bit, and I could do a little bit more next time, rather than, gosh, I really wish I tried. And don't just watch, play the game. You know, Nobody wants to be a spectator. You want to be a participant. Every one of you is a participant right now. You're participating in hopefully what's one of the best, if not the best, vacations of your life. And you get some education out of it, a lot of good food, too much good food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of exercise to come to burn the food, but, but that's something that's uh, important. Um, never give up. I don't know what that is. I don't know how to give up. 
You know, I, I, my biggest fear in life is failure, but I haven't failed at anything that I haven't tried to tackle again. You know, I'm like Thomas Edison. I'm going to reinvent the light bulb. No one's going to know it because it's going to be really weird, but um, we got light in here. If he would have stopped after the first try, we'd be in the dark, right? He probably tried, what, a thousand times before he got it right? And this is the old me, not the one in the white. This is me knocking the steroids out of this guy. <laughs> the guy who I'm hitting there is A-Rod. That was when I was in high school many moons ago, and I figured I'd put this on there because I was showing Nick back here the other day this picture, and he's like, ooh, that's so cool. So that's my claim to fame is me hitting A-Rod in high school, hopefully knocking, I think I knocked him out of playing football, and if that's the case, where's my money? Because he was a great baseball player making millions. So thank you guys very much. Any questions? Jeff? Yes. I think one exercise that you could add to make it an even better presentation is breathing. You're not going to get anywhere if your oxygen level is so low that your muscles are starving for yes. the oxygen they need to work. And the importance of avoiding breath holding and Valsalva. Yeah. So if you would yeah, I'm going to talk about that a little bit tomorrow, too, because tomorrow is going to be more uh, hands-on. But breathing, when it comes to, that's why I tell people it's important you should do yoga and resistance with more movement. But with the yoga, what it's going to do is it's going to bridge you into breathing properly. And if you breathe properly, you live properly. If you hold your breath, nothing's going to work out for you. Valsal Maneuver has a very, 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 very micro fraction of a place in the gym, and that's usually with an Olympian with a major lift that none of us are going to do. And if you do, come on, you've got to come on the road with me. You know, we're going to take this trip on the road. I just wanted to add that I think everyone needs to remember to laugh every day and make yourself laugh every day. That yeah. Really helps the breathing. Yeah. Yep. Laughing is part of life. You know what? The, everything has a funny side to it if you look at it in the right way. Any other questions? I have one more comment about the $600 piece of equipment that ride like a bull. Yeah. For those of you who have electric mobility, you're on your $800 bull. <laughs> Quit slouching in it. I see all these people walk, rolling around with their... Sit on a stability ball for a while. <laughs> really, everybody can do that. Even if it's someone's holding them on it. The last time we did a cruise, I had everybody sitting on stability balls, and you would you would be surprised how many smiles there were in the room. People say, "Oh my goodness!" I, I'd like about half of them tell me, "I can't," and I say, "You can, I can't, you can." I said, "Okay, well here, why you can't do it? Sit down," <laughs> and they did it, and they had so much fun, and they're using the bands, and even Alan was doing it. <laughs> Just flip the and then after that, you know, now he's an Olympic runner. No, he's not an Olympic <laughs> runner, but he could he can pass a pass. As Put one. the armrest up on your wheelchair. And yeah, and just, and just move on, around. Just sit on your seat. The less surface area you're sitting on, the more stability you have to have that you have because you're off balance a little bit. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, we're going to take a short break.